DeskLogic and moderator Daniela Fayer, group publisher of Defense for GovExec. All right. That really is a big clock. I'm running it down. Um, welcome back, everyone. Um, I hope you guys had a nice break out there. I think some people are still networking, so we'll wait for them to, well, we'll get started and they'll trickle in here. I'm delighted to be speaking today with um, Bill Washburn. Bill, thanks for joining me. Um, he's the Chief Program Officer with Mark Logic. Um, we're going to pivot a little bit, and in our discussion today, we're going to tackle government transformation, modernization, and cloud migration. It's a lot. Um, and he is going to hopefully help me understand, and you all understand, the challenges of engaging with the multiple layers and complexities um, in the IT enterprise. And just, you know, look at the implications of a lot of different technicalities that pertain to software and data. So with that, Bill, thank you for joining me. Um, and I thought maybe you would start by telling the audience a little bit about yourself and your background, because I think that'll give context to our conversation. Um, yeah, absolutely, Daniela. Thank you for uh, having me. Thank you to uh, Defense One. We're excited to be here. Um, you know, I've just discovered that I've had a 30-year career after 10 years uh, in the Army. Um, you know, my, I had assignments at 25th Infantry Division and then with the White House Communications Agency that brought me to the D.C. area. And I explored, um, in a 30-year career, um, software development, networking, systems, um, all as, a, uh, as an industry insider and sometimes explored uh, government uh, work in that 30 years. And it has led me to a very different prospect of how I look at, uh, you know, government systems and especially defense implementations, following some of what the Air Force does, the Army does, uh, how the Navy has to um, approach things when they're putting things on ships and faraway lands. You know, sometimes the Army just deploys when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. The Navy's always out there. Um, so you look at those uh, diverse systems and systems of systems and how they come about, and th there are really three paths. So that's what we're going to explore that's today. Like, okay, so let's dig into that. When we're thinking about IT transformation and the projects that you've just you know, mentioned that you've, you've seen and participated in and that you're familiar with, how are you seeing industry specifically responding? You know, how quickly can industry turn you know the 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 layers that understand these are the tools to help transformation in you know in the government environment which is you know as you mentioned rather complex um and has you know differentiated so i'd love to hear i'd love to hear that from your experience so um you know my experience goes back 30 years and it goes back before the government really bought commercial off the shelf even in the hardware realm so when you look at that transformation that occurred uh, in networking, you know, the government started buying commercial products, um, commercial products like Cisco. Um, they bought hardware, and getting away from hardened hardware, they bought commodity hardware, like an HP desktop. Um, the one thing that the government really hasn't fully migrated to is buying commercial off-the-shelf software. And there's still, um, pinning their hopes on how do we deliver capabilities and software um, from a bespoke perspective or, you know, develop it from the ground up. And it takes years and years and hundreds of thousands of man hours and, you know, armies of developers and you have to have a certain approach to that. Um, so one of the alternatives to that is open source. Mm -hmm. And open source may get you 20% of the way, 30% of the way, um, but there's also risk built into open source. Mm -hmm. So when you look at some of the challenges that you have with building it from scratch, you have time, right? Do you really have time? Do you really have dollars? Do you really have effort? And how many of those requirements that are lined up 
um, to get to a battle management system um, are you going to be able to take down in one year, two years, five years, 10 years? Um, or do you take an open source start and how much time do you shave off of that 10 year timeline? Um, or conversely, you buy commercial off the shelf software right. and now you're adapting commerciality to a government requirement, a defense requirement. How many of those requirements are met by the commercial software? Because we know taken the years and years to develop right. what they, what's needed, right? Because they've already done that. They've right? already done that. So right. they they've done those years and hours, and they've met those um, criteria in in many ways. It's it's a challenge that's already met. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Mark Logic, uh, your organization is really all about data. So I wanted to focus on data a little bit and ask how, how does that play out, you know, for all the layers of the, I guess what they term stack, and I understand that that's the tools to organize, store, and transform data. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about that expertise, data. So data is the, should be, <laughs> <laughs> the focus, right? So the, the, in, in a battle environment, you know, when you're looking at all the systems of systems, when you're thinking about what needs to be accomplished, you're basing it on the information that you have, right. the information that you're, you know, working against. And when you, mod, you know, when you bring all that together, now we have the cloud, right? Yeah. So you're migrating data to the cloud. Um, you're using tools that are on the cloud. But then the cloud has far reaches, right? And in a battle environment, do you have those? So transformation quickly moves us to the cloud. And now we're building the cloud to the edge right. and moving data to the edge. And we're doing this largely with commercial off the shelf in mind because they've already done that. They do it in banks, they do it in finance, they, do it in insurance companies, they do it in the medical fields. Mm -hmm. So it's proven, it's solid, mm -hmm. it's in practice, and it's very analogous to what we have in defense systems today. But in a contested environment, when you talk about the edge for DOD, that's a contested environment. Like, I mean, you right. could be in the middle of theater, right? right. Uh, so it is yeah, that so the you're, answer? You're, well, so what do you need? You need a system that's reliable in that um, contested environment where you have intermittent communications, where you have latencies, um, where you have that uh, challenge and you're meeting it with products that have already addressed those problems, right? Or if you're doing it in a bespoke manner, you've built that in. Okay. Or if you have an open source, is there a product that'll augment that capability? So with Mark Logic, I will, you know, say that we do have a DDIL solution, um, and we do go to the edge with, a, you know, addressing those problems, and it's not an easy uh, lift right. to get there. But it's a critical element of the battlefield uh, data mm -hmm. needs. So let me touch on legacy systems. I feel like legacy systems. We've been talking about this for years, right? Um, and but that typically is a hardware right, question, and of course you're referencing software. Um, I wanted to ask about the parallels there, and um, and then also in that, you know, how should government choose a path uh, for transformation? Does that play into it? Yeah. So, um, I mean, when we look at a float, um, we're going to start with the ship. You know, so C systems are are usually bought mm -hmm. with that build out, right. right? And one of the things that I think the Navy has to overcome, uh, unfortunately, is buying everything with one build at a time. Um, if you're going to have a network layer that works across you know, all of those different deliveries, that has to keep pace because if you build one ship and it ages five years with that delivery, how is it gonna catch up with the, the delivery that happens five years later? Or are you going to try to implement something that's gonna be five years old before it's developed? So 
keep in mind that when I talk about system of systems and systems it's at the software level, mm -hmm. we're constantly updating, we're constantly upgrading. So with a commercial COTS off the shelf or even government off the shelf product, it will maintain its currency. So that's one way of delivery mm -hmm. to a C system that maintains its currency over that five years of the total delivery of the multiple systems. So that's what you recommend because that's yeah. the commercial aspect of it is they they are going to keep it up. Right. And so the, the government doesn't have to think about that. Like <laughs> exactly. To, right? Well, hopefully they're thinking about it because what we want them to do is we want them to maintain uh, even the commercial software that's in their environment. Okay. So it seems to me, from what I'm hearing, and we have a short a bit of time that we're going to dig into, planning uh, is very critical. Um, and so looking, looking at where you are, looking at where you're going, right? Um, in, a, in all these systems, like talk a little bit about that process, the planning process, and why that's so important. So one of the things I really like to talk about is um, the Defense Department came out with its data strategy a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And they're maintaining that data strategy. Okay. So not only do they publish a, a strategy, but then they publish an update. And they stay with it. And it, the, quite frankly, the benefit of a strategy mm -hmm is adherence to the changes in the market, the changes in the battle environment, the changes in systems of systems. So if they're adopting something that occurs like AI, mm -hmm. right? We're talking a lot about so that. So that, yeah. that wasn't the that wasn't the highlight, right? It wasn't right. the highlight. It, the data was the highlight of the, right. the data strategy. Right. So now they're adapting data to the AI and making sure that data is relevant, it's readied, it's uh, adaptable, um, accountable, uh, mm -hmm. because again, it's going to be the center of the universe. Right. It's all dependent on the data, and your providers need to be co cognizant of that, and that strategy planning needs to bring everybody in line mm -hmm. for that. And, and that was one way of doing it. That, that was one way that I really appreciated because it was a, such a thoughtful um, paper. So uh, we only have a couple minutes left, and um, it can't ignore that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's unfortunate. <laughs> um, but uh, so what advice do you have uh, for folks uh, that are you know, addressing transformation? What do they need to keep in mind um, as it pertains to data, software, all that stuff? Sure. So what I would like to see is I would really like to see the, the departments of the defense environment as, you know, whether we're talking uh, DTIC, whether we're talking DIA, whether we're talking Big Navy, or whether we're talking one of the PEOs, is to look at those requirements and see how those requirements can be satisfied with other than build from scratch that takes too long to ever meet them. To can they be satisfied? Do a runoff. Bring, you know, your software vendors in and talk to them because that's what we did 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked to HP. Hey, can you guarantee delivery of thousands of desktop right. computers? So, that would be the the one thing that I look for is I look at the requirements and I see what can our product meet in the requirements list. Mm -hmm. And I'm only responsive to those requirements. I'm not going to stretch and think that I can meet them all. But in many cases, I can meet 85, 90% of them out of the box. Okay. Bill, thank you so much for being with us and for supporting the Defense One Tech Summit. We really appreciate it. Please join me in thanking Bill. Thanks. Thank you very much.